Um, uh, we were here at Faro um, in the last months of food at uh, 18 and somehow some of us were infected by the virus <laughs> of the solar cooking. So when we went back to the university, we thought that we must do something about solar cooking. So as we usually do some kind of, we, we do thermal modeling and we do some experiments, say, well, why don't we try to put something into solar cooking? And uh, what, what we felt is that uh, there was a lack of uh, values about the thermal performance of uh, those kind of solar cookers, which are very simple and effective, but uh, we really uh, didn't know what are their thermal, thermal parameters. We wanted to get um, repeatable results, robust results, so we worked in, in thermal modeling and also in the experimental approach, which is very, very important, is the approach that Chai has described. And also this, in the ray tracing optical analysis, uh, we think of it as a kind of a su support tool. It's uh, we, what we want to understand um, the experimental results. So let's move on. We were we used this tool. It's the uh, the uh, National Renewable Energy Laboratory in the United States. They have a tool. It is called Salt Trace. Is a ray tracing code say, for complex solar optical system. It's usually, it is used for uh, concentrating solar power, but you can use it also for uh, modeling on general optical system. Is the case of a of a solar cooker like this? Is the the funnel solar cooker? Um, it's interesting too because it's an open so open source tool and it's free to use, so anyone can use it. Mm. Then we, we create a model, the model of a solar cooker, and this has several pieces. We have the, the panels. The panels are quite simple, but you have to put in the space, in the correct position, the correct angles. And we also have the, the pot, it's clear there what, what this is. And also the, the glass shell around it. So we can type all that data into the salt trace model and also we did some scripting in order to do some parametric analysis in order to change quickly things but you can at our first step simply type all the information, all the geometrical information. And then once that you have the model you can actually do the ray tracing, you can generate a large number of rays and you can follow all the interactions with the system, you can follow all the reflections, you can follow how many rays are being absorbed in the different parts of the cooker and there in the picture you can see um, some rays trajectories, the red ones are rays that are going outside of the cooker because the cooker is not a perfect geometry. And only there we see 100 rays. Usually the simulations are made with around 10 million rays or so, it's, it's enough. Then, in order to do some analysis of, uh, of the thermal efficiency, uh, sorry, the optical efficiency, then we have to define uh, two important angles. We have uh, the sun azimuth angle related to the bisector. We take the bisector of the funnel as the reference, uh, it's a reference line or reference uh, plane. So we have the sun azimuth. We can keep it by tracking, by following the sun. We must keep this uh, deviation quite small but we wanted to know what happened if we um, keep the if we keep the funnel still and then the sun goes on and then the other angle important is the sun elevation angle but related to the bisector our funnel has an elevation angle 
if you put it flat on a surface of 40 degrees, 40 degrees from the horizontal. So it seems that the, the optimal, at first you can think that the optimal elevation angle of the sun is 40 degrees. Later we will see if that is true or not. And then it's negative if the sun is lower and positive if the sun is higher than 40 degrees. Then we made a lot of simulations changing those angles and we can create something like this, which is a two-dimensional map. Then we, in this two-dimensional map, we have the uh, optical efficiency, is the power absorber in the pot over uh, the power the power on the on the aperture area. Hmm. In this first simulation, we are we think uh, we pass uh, perfect optics. That means that we have panels with 100% reflectivity. Uh, the glass cover has 100% transmittivity, and the pot has 100% absorptivity. So the results here are uh, just geometry. So no rays has been the rays are is not absorbed. The ray is not absorbed any place. It's just geometry. So you can you can see the first important thing is that there is a peak, but the peak is not in 40 degrees elevation. The peak is around, is when the sun is lower, the peak is around uh, minus 10 degrees. So it seems that uh, the optical efficiency is better if the sun is a little bit lower than the natural bisector angle of the, of the cooker. And that is quite surprising at first, because it's bad. Then the other thing interesting is that there is a quite flat area where the optical efficiency is quite constant. So you see that in the x uh, axis, in the horizontal axis, you can think that uh, it's not exactly, but uh, one hour still the, 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 the sun moves around 15 degrees, as in more or less, per hour. So uh, five degrees is 20 minutes with the, with the cooker still. So there is a, it's very, it's not very sensitive. You can, if you reorient, if you track the sun each 20 minutes, it, it should be, you know, it should be. And another interesting thing is that we have at peak 60% optical efficiency. So 40% of the rays are uh, j just jump out of the funnel. It's not a perfect geometry. Hmm. Then the next thing, sorry because I am missing the right button. The next thing we did is to put non-perfect optics. We put a reflectivity of 85%, uh, transmittivity of 80, 85% and absorptivity of 90%. The, these are typical values. We don't know exactly the, the number but they are quite a reasonable number. And in this case, we see that the optical efficiency, of course, is reduced. Now we have only 36% of peak. <laughs> the next thing that we did was to take into account specular errors. So as the geometry is not perfect, the geometry is not really perfect, it's uh, specular. So we can define a specular direction it's about, here I'm going to present only for 104 million radians, it's about 6 degrees. It's defined uh, if you think that uh, this, the errors follow a distribution, a Gauss distribution, and you have this 6 degrees is the standard deviation of that distribution. It's a way of uh, modeling the specular It's quite not very good. Um, quality. In this case, um, side by side, in the left is a perfect specular and in the right is not very good specular. So it's not very sensitive. You see that from 36 we pass to 34% in the optical efficiency. 
So that geometry is not very sensitive to that kind of geometry errors. It's quite good. Then we, I'm going to show you a simple check on the cooking power. We take some data from the last uh, presentation. We take the power when the average temperature difference with the ambient is uh, nothing, is zero. In that case, it's something similar to the... Um, we can compare that with the optical efficiency. So the test results are made for 1700 watts and we, here we find with a, with a metal cover, with a black metal cover, 100, 100 watts. And if we make this uh, simple uh, operation with the dry tracing, we take seven, 700 watts, the beam fraction around 85%. We neglect the diffuse fraction. It's uh, something sim very, very simplified analysis. The optical efficiency, it's about 35% as we have seen. So if we make this simple calculation, we find that the power absorbed must be around 115 watts, which is a very reasonable value because these two numbers are not directly comparable because it's not the same. The, the power that is absorbed in the metal pot is not, um, it's not cooking power, it's not power in the, right, it's not power inside the water. But it's, they are numbered in the same order of magnitude, and that is good. This is, um, the 114 is an upper bound. So, our conclusions and perspective, we have found out the optical efficiency is around 35%, at peak, more or less. And the sweet spot is quite wide. So it's a little bit about 10 degrees below the bisector end of the specular errors are not do not reduce much the efficiency of this design. The retracing results are compatible and reasonable. And we have found that the retracing models support our understanding of the experimental results. We think of doing many more research using this model and others. Uh, you see here, for example, the transparent lead, and we can change the elevation of the receiver, the configuration of the cooker, and so on and so on. One interesting thing about this tool is that it's, uh, um, it's freely, you can use it. In the future, we're planning to make it available to anyone that maybe can do their own research about solar cookers. In, uh, I think in a new future, <laughs> we hope so. So um, this is this is all. Thank you for a nice presentation. Um, my question is the the geometry uh, that you use for the for the pot that may have quite a substantial effect on your calculations there. When you chosen one particular geometry for the pot, but you could choose a different one if you wanted to. That's one that, it, it, it's, that, that may affect the results. The other is, what is actually the concentration ratio that you have? You have an aperture of 0.55 square meters. What is the surface area of your cooking pot? And the ratio will give you the concentration ratio. Right. Uh, thank you. Well, it's, I agree with you. The, the geometry of the pot is, has some influence. We have uh, used the same geometry of the pot that we are using in experimental test. It's quite a standard, but we are planning to change and in, in order to, to evaluate the impact of it. And about the concentration ratio, honestly, it's a number that I did, but now I don't remember. We have a, but we can do, I can do, and I can tell you, <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember, it's not very high, of course. And um, I don't remember that number. I can do it. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, nice presentation. Uh, I would like to uh, give a recommendation for one of your future tests. Uh, you should use uh, a transparent pot with a dark bottom. A 
and you should, should let uh, the radiation go through the water on the dark, uh, the dark uh, ground, and you will, find you will get much better efficiencies because all these effects of the surface of the pot overheating, radiating uh, in the inbuilt uh, water, and also if you if you if you consider the different wavelengths of the sun, uh, you find that the infrared part uh, beyond 1.1 micrometer is directly absorbed by the water. That means you have a do it, I'd be interested to see the results. Okay, thank you. You mean uh, transparent pot, but not the lid, but everything but the bottom? Only the bottom black. Right. right. Because you, you show us this pattern mm -hmm. in which we have roughly 40% of the radiation in a more or less diffuse distribution. And this should reach the dark. Yeah, there are some uh, scientists like you and also solar cooker designers in the United States who would be really interested in sharing information with you. Do you have a, can you provide a contact information? Yes. So they can reach you? Yes, yes. And do you have, do you have a website with this information? Or? No, not yet. Okay. We, we want to, uh, we are just uh, beginners in this, but we, as we will progress, uh, we plan to make it all data available and we plan to put some kind of website with the data of all the, uh, all the testing and, and the models and so on in order to support other people. Can you provide an email? Yes, email? of course. Thank you. This is just a simulation. Yeah, and now the, the geometry of your of the telescope is quite relatively yeah. simple and uh, very symmetric. Now the curves that you get are not smooth; they are even not uh, left-right symmetric. They are somehow volatile or what? No. Can you give an explanation for that? Yes. It's only a map, it's because this, um, I have it out because I have another one more, um, you know, more smooth. It's simply that uh, I don't have enough rays here and there is some uncertainty, some in about the, the distribution. Uh, if you don't have enough rays, you can find that maybe a few rays in, in the right, more in the right than in the left can yeah, let you to something that seems to be non-symmetric but actually it is symmetric it depends on the number of the rays I have another one which uh, I, I go through a smoothing, a smoothing procedure, a smoothing method and it's perfectly symmetric but this one is the, the raw one it's uh, something without any kind of uh, process or further processing so it, it, it is because the, the nature of the method, maybe with more, of, no, maybe not, for sure, with more and more rays, you can find here something uh, symmetric from left to right. Okay. Yes, it's something that I have, I, I also have thought about. So are you familiar with my Copenhagen that's smooth? Would the ray tracing work on that? Yes, yes, yes. You're about your, 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 
Uh, your cooker is smooth as a cube. Yeah, it's completely smooth all the way around. And you change, it uses three different angles. You know, yes. Configurations. We haven't tried yet. It's something that we, we, were, we were talking about. We want to... Actually, we wanted to test your, your cooker. And I to test it. Thank you. And also, and also, we want to be able to model... I think... I don't know because you know that um, devil is in details or something that is in. So maybe the kind of uh, of this of that is, that that cure if is if it's something different that is not uh, it's not a circle not a parabola. What kind of uh, of cure is, is it, your so cooker? Sometimes the curve is, is actually yes. circular, but, and other times that it always reflects sort of to the center. Well, we can work on it down. Yes, I, I think that uh, it, it is, if you ask if it is possible to do a model, a retracing model like this for that kind of, yes, the answer is I think, I guess 99% of, because there's 100% that I'm not sure. Maybe we can find some <laughs> difficulties, um, but 99% I think that yes, we will be able. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. I've wanted to do that for years. <laughs> uh, thank, you. thank you very much. Now uh, we have the last presentation. Experimental platform for solar cookers and oven at technical headquarters, UTFSM, by Pedro Serrano. Yeah, he has the fault. I organized the conference. Yes, I am the grandfather of this. 